the monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. We welcome you to another edition of Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith and Coach Dave McGinnis from Titans Radio is here. So you know it's a special show. How is everybody? Amy, how are you? So good. And Coach Mack, I know you're ready because it's time to review the schedule. Mike Keith and Amy Wells, I can't wait for this. I absolutely love this. All right, I'm going to jump right in and take a look at the Titans 2020 schedule. So here we go. The Tennessee Titans are going to open up in prime time. The final game of kickoff weekend, the Titans will play at Denver Monday Night Football, September the 14th. The game will kick off at 9:10 Central Time. By the way, September 14th is the latest date for a Titans first game ever. And the latest first game for the franchise since 1977. The Titans will host their home opener the following Sunday, September 20th at Nissan Stadium against AFC South rival Jacksonville. Week three sees Tennessee travel to Minnesota. The last time the Titans and the Vikings met, the 2016 season opener. The first quarter of the season ends with a home date against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then come two more games at Nissan Stadium. That's right, the Titans have three straight home games to begin October. Following the game with the Steelers, the Titans host Buffalo on October the 11th and Houston on October the 18th. The bye week comes in week seven. Tennessee will then hit the road for the first time in six weeks as the Titans make a November 1st visit to Cincinnati. Only a brief road trip as it's back to Nissan Stadium for two more in a row. The Bears come to Nashville on November the 8th, and then the Colts hit town for Thursday night football on November the 12th. From there, lots and lots of road work. At Baltimore on November the 22nd, at Indianapolis on November the 29th. December starts with a visit from the Cleveland Browns, The Titans then head south to Jacksonville on December the 13th. Week 15, final home game of the regular season. Tennessee will host Detroit on either Saturday, December 19th or Sunday, December the 20th. That date will be determined later in the regular season. And then the very tough ending. Sunday night football at Green Bay on December the 27th, followed by at Houston in week 17, that comes on January the 3rd. So, Amy Wells, I'm going to turn it over to you, and Coach Mack, to kind of hit it here. Take us through the high points of what you just heard. Coach Mack, you are the authority on all things coaching. So, as a coach, what is the first thing that you look at when you receive the schedule? Well, the first thing that stands out to me when I just look at it, I want to see where the AFC games are. Not necessarily where the division games are. I want to see where the conference games are. And it really sticks out to me. You, we've got four at home early, five of six of those AFC games. So there are three primetime games for the Tennessee Titans. Is that a reflection of how much success the Tennessee Titans had in 2019? It absolutely is. I mean, that, that's the reward that comes with having a significant season before. And clearly getting to the AFC championship game, This is very much a validation of what you did last year. People want to see you. I I love it. Now, it seems to me that having three straight home games is a pretty big advantage for the Tennessee Titans. So I have two questions here. Is that true, first? And then what does the team have to do to really take advantage of having three home games in a row? Well, I mean, we just listened to Mike Keith say when he paused after he got through the the home game, the early schedule, that now you have to go on the road. If you're going to reap the benefits of three home games, you're going to have to pay the toll in, in, in away games later on in the season. So when you get those home games early, I mean, the very definite answer is you have to first, you have to be prepared for it. You got to win them. Now, here's another two-part question. Which is the okay. bigger challenge, Coach Mack? Is it harder to have a very, 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 very late Monday night game in Denver and then a short week to get ready for Jacksonville? 
or to have back-to-back -back road games in new in november at baltimore and at indy uh, the back-to-back -back at baltimore at indy late in the season and here's the reasons why late in the season at baltimore you're, you're thinking weather to begin with right you weather to begin with those are afc games much more difficult look if you're going to play the opener on monday night you want to have a division opponent that you are familiar with on the following Sunday because your preparation can already be in the can. You know who you're playing. The tough thing about playing on the road on Monday night for an opener is if when you come back, your second opponent is is also an un, uh, unfamiliar opponent because that, that just puts a lot of strain on your pre-preparation. So are you pleased with having a week seven bye? Is that a good time for a bye week? Well, I mean, any coach is going to tell you that the buy is fine with them because you've got no control over it. But look, you've got those six games before that buy. And as I've already mentioned, you've got four of those at home. Five of them are AFC games. I mean, you can get geared up and gunned up and you come through those with advantageous wins. You've set yourself up pretty nice. All right, Coach Mac, give me the game on the schedule that jumps out at you the most and tell us why. I am looking at that at Indy game late. You're, you're, you're in the grind part of the season then. You're going to go to a very emotional game at Baltimore. I mean, that's going to be going into some real hostile territory, but you have to be Indy at Indy. We got over that hurdle a little last year. We got to keep jumping that hurdle. All right, let's talk about a couple other things going on with the Titans outside of schedule. A guy that we've seen a lot of in the last few years, Jonathan Joseph, a defensive back from the Houston Texans, signed by the Titans as a free agent. How can Jonathan Joseph factor into the Titans defense in 2020? Mike, I listened to his press conference today and I was really impressed. I mean, you can tell that that's a vet. He's a vet. He gets it. One of the best answers he had. Look, I coached a Hall of Fame cornerback in Aeneas Williams, and I could just hear Aeneas talking through what Jonathan Joseph was saying. The question was about his 4-3-1 speed. He said, look, I ran 4-3-1 one time. I haven't run a 40 since. He said, there's a time to run fast, and there's a time to know when to play fast. That, that was such a veteran answer. Just listening to that guy talk, he's exactly who you want on your team. He's exactly who you want in the locker room. I mean, I'm going to be a favorite of this guy immediately. The good news about him is I don't know if he runs 4-3-1 anymore, but I'm confident that he doesn't run 5-3-1. Well, so let me just say this. Anytime your thing. starting point is 4-3-1, if you get slower from there, you're still a fast human. You're still okay. <laughs> Coach Dave McGinnis, thank you so much for taking time with us on Titans All Access. Oh, my pleasure. Love it. All right. When we come back, Amy Wells is going to do some checking in in John Robinson's house with his daughters, Taylor and Bailey. Stay tuned. Hey, guys. This is Mike Brable from the Tennessee Titans. I want to thank um, all those amazing doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals at St. Thomas and Ascension uh, during this COVID-19 your dedication and your service and your determination to help our community uh, has not gone unnoticed. I want to thank you for putting our community's well-being uh, before your own uh, and, and hopefully that we can emulate what you guys have done uh, during this trying time. I want to thank you again. Taylor and Bailey Robinson are the daughters of Titans General Manager John Robinson. But that's not really your claim to fame. Your claim to fame is producing all the video content for the Tennessee Titans during the draft. You gave us all of the behind the scenes looks. So hello, it's good to see you guys. Hi. Hi. Now I want to know what it was like really spending time with your dad during the draft. Um, most of the time it was fine. He was pretty chill until it got to when we were about to make the pick and we were in the draft room and it was just, I was like stressed just watching him, let alone, like I can't imagine what he's he was thinking. So, but overall it was very good, very chill. And it was cool to see uh, dad like speaking to all of them and seeing like who would they pick and like the whole draft. Now Taylor, was there anything that surprised you seeing this whole process unfold? I, I honestly just, how busy it all was was surprising like i knew it would be like obviously it'd be busy it's very you know stressful thing but just even online how like much is going on and how it's like 
there's even at the last minute he could make a trade like in my mind like watching it at home you know in previous years i think oh he like knows what he's doing already he's going into it kind of you know set in stone plan but it's like not like that at all like right before we picked i can't remember when he was like calling people like about to trade and i was like what is going on like it was just it was crazy Whose idea was it to have you guys be such a big part of this at-home drafting process? So I like started making those little videos like throughout the week, like showing kind of what our quarantine was like. And Nate, he's in charge of like the, the Titan social media and everything. He posted one a few weeks ago and he reached out to me and my mom and was like, do you think Taylor would want to, you know, help get us some content because we can't, no one, there would be no other way to get content. And so me and Bailey just started videoing. It was really fun. Now, you mentioned that vlog that you guys have been putting up. How did that start? And how did you convince your parents to be part of it? So it started over spring break with my friend. And that's when like the first one happened. And over spring break, it was just us. And every day we did a little vlog. And it was like less than five minutes, super short. And then I started doing them like at home going, you know, deliver my friends, you know, Starbucks during quarantine and just like doing all these other things. And it just become more and more, just more things that we're vlogging. It's really fun. Bailey, have you gotten a lot of attention for your, uh, your showcase on the vlog? Yes. Uh, my dad said that a lot of people uh, laugh at like the, for the first vlog, he said that everyone, like the different parts of like, Dad screaming a lot, <laughs> and then at him to stop screaming. <laughs> Do you guys like having him home during this draft? Is that kind of a cool thing? Yeah, it was really cool. Like it was a really cool once in a life experience. Um, I, like I don't know when I'll be able to do something like that again. It was really cool just to see behind the scenes. Um, it, it was like I like how I get to see him like every day, and uh earlier in time and then I get to eat dinner a lot with him now. All right well girls we have high expectations for more Robinson family content coming to us soon. Thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me a little bit. Yeah thanks for having us. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Jeffrey Simmons. I um, just want to give a major shout out to all the doctors and nurses at Essential um, St. Thomas and you know I just want to Tell you how much we appreciate you guys and keep uh, working hard. Thank you guys. Amy Wells and I are pleased to be joined on Titans All Access by our friend, Lance Smith. Lance, welcome to the program. Hey guys, good to see you, even if it is in these little boxes. Uh, we're getting used to this, this way of life, but I, I can't wait to you know see you face to face again. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you as well. And we look forward to hearing about this week's Titans fan who's in our 49th state i hear oh very good yeah that's right alaska mike i i love hearing uh from fans far and wide and we have a really great uh international fan base you know the titans brand travels well we got a huge uh, german fan base that comes to the games uh but this guy john up in alaska i met on social media some years ago he said you got a cool job i said i know and uh, I actually got to meet him face to face when he came to a game last season. But I thought, who better to interview for our fan zone piece than this guy, my guy up in Alaska, JD, who got fan zoned. Join now from way up north, my buddy JD Richardson. How are you, man? I'm fantastic, man. Thank you. It's so good to talk to you. Uh, you live in Alaska, you're repping the Titans gear. How does someone in Alaska? become a Tennessee Titans fan. Yeah, it, it all happened. I think I was like eight years old and it was a Sunday morning. I think I was waiting for uh, my family to get ready for church and uh, turned on some NFL football. I uh, saw the two-tone blue, Eddie George, Steve McNair, and um, they got me into football. So we're not really obligated to a specific team up here. Okay. Um, a lot of people, uh, they like to go with the Seattle Seahawks because they're the closest state to us. I'm different and um, chose my own path and stuck with the Titans. Uh, do you have a, a favorite uh, a Titan player of all time? 
Uh, I, I do have a favorite player. It's Eddie George. Um, I was born on July 27th, and that's one of the things that got me um, interested in the Titans. I saw Eddie tear it up uh, wearing 27. But besides Eddie, I'd probably have to say Javon Curse, the freak. So the freak! He was a lot of fun to watch, uh, really charismatic, and he, uh, we drafted him. So he was an original type. Yeah, uh, like like you see, I'm I'm September 27th, my birthday, 927. So I've got the oh got perfect the look up there. What's the most common misconception someone say from Tennessee might have about someone who lives in Alaska, like your lifestyle? Yeah, I I probably say there's no snow 24 uh, seven. We do have seasons. <laughs> it's a pretty typical upbringing but uh so we're obviously distant from people but we're not isolated um we're well connected with um everyone else in the lower 48 but uh kind of uh exotic in its own way yeah no that's great so you're not that's not an igloo that you're you're actually living in currently yeah it's a it's a (laughs) <laughs> three-story igloo <laughs> <laughs> that's great man uh thank you for hopping on here hey you're a you're a super chill dude i'm glad we're friends i'm glad i met online uh but before you go from way long distance give me a big old tighten up tighten up there you go jd you've been fan zoned i appreciate it man take care thank you man take care Lance, it is always an adventure when you're on this show and who knew you were going to take us all the way to alaska thanks lance thanks guys All right, we have so much more Titans All Access when we return, including a trip into the community to do a little bit of good with Blue's Clues himself, Joshua Kalu. Stick around. Hey, this is just a special message to all those caretakers, all those people out there in the front line trying to um, take care of this pandemic, man. Just want to tell you, we appreciate you. Keep, keep up the fight. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, my wife herself is a nurse. She's out there in the front line. So I definitely have a, a understanding and appreciation for what y'all do. And just keep it going. God bless. We're always proud of our Tennessee Titans when they get out in the community. But right now, well, even more so. Amy, a lot of our frontline medical people and our emergency responders are getting visits from Tennessee Titans, and it's making a difference. Absolutely. Mike Keith, it feels like everywhere you look, there's a Tennessee Titan lending a hand. Taylor Lewan and Ryan Tannehill have been donating food and speaking with first responders. Jonu Smith has been donating meals. Malcolm Butler has been collecting supplies. There are so many Titans out in the community right now. We could do a whole show just on this topic alone, but right now we're going to show you one of the latest examples of a Titan in his community making a difference. This is Joshua Kalu in Houston. Watch this. Y'all, y'all keep doing your thing there. I'm going to come feed y'all and everything's going to be good. I got y'all. We are hungry. I'm, I know. We're about to be angry. Nah, don't do that now. <laughs> don't do that. Those Wait, patients no. those patients need tender love and affection, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going sure, to make sure your belly's good so y'all can go ahead and do your, do your thing. We're going to save lives. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll see y'all soon. Okay, bye. Bye. Everyone likes it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your support. See us again. Yes. Plenty of milk. Well, they'll be eating very well. Today. This is a friend of mine, family friend. Grew up with this guy. Went to high school with him. His family owns a restaurant. This happens to be Mesa Grills. Very local. Yeah, oh. Living it up in the kitchen, doing everything. We are yeah, so glad to help. And uh, if you need anything else, let us know. I'm from Ailey, Texas, and we gotta look out for each other. Community's a big thing, you know. We're all trying to stick together, band together, with everything going on. I told myself, let me use local businesses and support our nurses at the same time. We got a whole bunch of food nicely prepared. Rice, shish kebabs, we got chicken, steak. We got hummus in the back, we got salad in the back, the breadsticks, I got just some sandwiches. I wanted to do a bid for them, you know, they've been, been battling and battling. 
long hours, day and night. My sister, she's one of the people that I'm feeding today too, and I have another sister in New York right now. She sees it firsthand, and she's been telling us it's, it's not discriminating. It's something that everybody should take serious. I just felt like all this is prompting me to, to go out and do what I can to support so our nurses and, and, and everybody in that field. I might got Obo to pull up to the Los Angeles Rams, you know, to come help and support. My name is Joshua Kalu. I got a company called Free Blue. My mission is to use local businesses to help out our local nurses, you know, keep fighting, letting them know that we're here to support them and they can keep supporting those patients, giving them tender love and care and affection and all of them good stuff. <laughs> when Amy Wells and I come back, we talk about honors for the Tennessee Titans from the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. That's next on Titans All Access. On August the 1st at the Omni Nashville, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame will induct its 55th class. Going to be a lot of fun. People like Jeff Fisher, like Heath Schuler like D'Angelo Williams, like Dick Horton, like Sonny Smith, like Tim Corbin, like all kinds of people. Terry Crisp, it's going to be a big night. But you know what else they do? They have a slate of honorees, and the Tennessee Titans, Amy Wells, are a big part of that. That's so awesome. It's such a big night, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame induction. And I think Titans fans would like to be involved, Mike Keith. Can you tell them how to do that? So if you want to be a part of what is going to be a great night, the honorees, the inductees, everything that goes on, let's repeat it once again. Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, August the 1st, Omni Nashville. For tickets, go to tshf.net. You can get a single ticket, or if you're like Amy, just buy a whole table and have all your friends there. I am very rich and have many friends, so this is clearly what I'm going to do. So that's going to do it for this edition of Titans All Access. Amy Wells, it's been good seeing you. Mike Keith, it's been good to see you as well. I always look forward to these times. Me too. For Amy, I'm Mike. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.